Hey everyone, today we're going to do a kind of funky question where we are going to take some representation of some large integer and we are going to try and find the modulus of that when we divide it by a given number. So let's go ahead and look at this example that we have and first honestly let's just make sure that we understand exactly what this problem is asking. So as we can see in this example here, Basically, the way this works is that we have some array of bytes and the first item is the highest order byte in some large integer and the last element is the lowest order byte and then we fill in the middle. So, for example, if we look at this example, what we're really saying is what is the mod of this number where we could just like if you want to know what the actual number is, you can just concatenate everything together. And so in this case, our number is equal to in like this is obviously in hexadecimal and the number is 1005. So we're trying to divide, see what the modulus uh, is of dividing 10 or dividing 1005 by 10. So obviously the answer here is 10. And so hopefully that makes sense. We're going to get into this in a little bit more depth, but let's just go ahead and dig into the problem and hopefully it'll make sense as we go along. So the first thing that we want to do is actually understand, make sure that we understand the problem. And this is sort of what I just mentioned, where we want to really make sure that we understand what this is or what this representation means and how it's going to work in the problem. And we may also, in this case, want to define what our function is going to look like because I think that makes it a little bit easier to just understand exactly what we're working with. So we're, I'm not actually going to write the code yet, but I'm just going to define this function which is going to return an integer and then it's going to be called mod and I'm going to take in a byte array that I'm going to call a and an int b. And that's going to be our function. So hopefully this will help. And just make sure that you understand how you're going to how this array actually converts into some sort of integer or some sort of actual value. And we can think about if there are any questions we want to ask here other than just general clarifying questions. One thing that comes to mind for me is I want to know how long our byte array could potentially be. Because like, what are we working with here? Are we, for example, what if I, if I said that the byte array is only ever going to be like the length of this is four or less, then we know that for some for some stupid reason in this case, they're using this byte array instead of just a normal integer, but it represents exactly the same thing. Because obviously in Java, at least a byte or an integer is four bytes. And potentially, so in that case, what would be the easiest solution by far would be to just straight up convert this into an integer and then do the modulus operation. And speaking of which, we may also want to confirm that we are allowed to use the normal modulus operation because potentially since that's what we're like if let's imagine that they that the maximum length of this array was four then it would seem like maybe they are looking for something slightly more complicated it just seems overly simple and so then we would it's worth asking in this case we're going to actually say that this that our integer our law our array could be any length. And so we can use the modulus operation because the tricky part is dealing with this array of any length, not the modulus operation. So hopefully that makes sense. And we're, so as I said, we're going to be dealing with a integer of potentially a very large size. And that's, you know, the reason for representing it as a byte array rather than just an integer or a long. And so we're going to need to think about how we can solve this in a way where we're maybe you know we can't just mash everything together and you might also ask can i use the big integer built in or the big integer class in java because then potentially you could convert this to a big integer and that has a modulus function so in this case obviously i don't want to do that because that would be again sort of too simple but these are good things to ask and just to clarify with your interviewer so let's think about how we can actually go about solving this and just to, when I first look at this problem, the things that jump out to me are the fact that we have this potentially very long array of 
bytes. And so we're going to want some to create some sort of function where we're not handling all the bytes at once. We're going to want to treat a single byte at a time or maybe two bytes at a time or something like that. And the thing that I think of when I immediately think of this is actually long division. And this is a good technique if you're struggling with the problem, think about how you would solve it in a very manual sense. And we can do this in a sense using long division. So let's actually go through an example and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's just say we had 12 divided by 152. So the first thing that we do when we do long division is we see if this outer number can divide into the first digit of our larger number. And in this case, it can't. And so we put a zero up top, we multiply zero by 12, we put it under here and then we subtract them, right? So we end up with one as our, and one is the remainder of dividing 12, dividing one by 12, right? So we're gonna, I'm gonna try and as I go along, like sort of use the terminology that we're going to be using later and so hopefully it'll start to make sense how this is relevant. So we are going to basically by doing this we take the mod of we take one mod 12 and then we're going to bring down this five and that's the next step of our long division and bringing down the five is essentially the same as saying one times ten plus five. Right so we're taking the we're taking the remainder from this division here, multiplying it by 10, and then adding in the next digit. So now, and then we're gonna repeat this again. So we have 12 divided, or 15 divided by 12 is going to be one, and the mod of that is going to be three, right? So we, in this case, we do one, one times 12, so one, times 12 and we get 12 and then we subtract it so which is the same as taking the mod so our result is 3 which is the mod which is what we expect and then we're going to do this again we're going to do what we did before again so we multiply 3 by 10 and then we pull down this next value and so we add that to 3 times 10 right so we end up with 32 and then we're going to divide 12 into 32 and that is going to give us 2 and 2 times 12 is 24 so minus 24 and the difference is 8 and so 8 is our remainder so we get 12 that 152 divided by 12 is equal to 12 with a remainder of 8 and so let's think about how this is actually applicable to what we're doing in this problem so what you probably can tell or is really the key thing here that I tried to highlight is that we're going through this number, which is our large number, which in this case is this number represented by the array. We're going through it digit by digit. So we're going through one at a time and we're basically appending the digits on and then taking the mod and then and then shifting and appending digits on. So each round, we multiply the mod of the previous operation of the previous division by 10, and then we add a, and then we add in the next one, and we add in the next digit. So we could also do this with binary, or we could we can do this. The same technique is applicable in any number system. And so in this case, we could treat this like a number system of base 256, right? Because one byte has a maximum value of two to the eighth or 256 or 255. It would be zero to 255. Or if you do assigned, you know, we don't have to get into all that, but the idea is that our number system would be base 256. Because if you did, for example, this, we uh, represent your number in base 256 as one zero, this would be equal to 256. And so what we wanna do here is we're going to treat this exactly the same as we did here, but using base 256 instead of base 10. And so what we can do is we can say that we will take the first, so we're gonna take the first byte, which is this value, and see if it's divisible by our integer. 
and or see what the mod is of dividing it by the integer. And then we're going to, so that's what we have here. And then we're gonna multiply it by 256 because 256 is our base. Or alternatively, you could say we're gonna shift it one byte, right? We're gonna shift it by eight. And so then we add the next byte in and we continue to do this. And so as you can hopefully see, it's exactly the same technique as we were doing with base 10, except that we're gonna use base 256 instead. And that way we can just keep repeating this process and then what we're gonna end up with is our remainder at the end because that's gonna be the mod that we get by taking the last, uh, by when we get to the last digit is just the remainder. So let's go ahead and one other thing that we might wanna think about is from a practical standpoint, what is going to be the size of our result? So I, I sort of put this in here, this int in here without actually talking about it before. But now we should think about what is going to be the size of our result. Is it going to be an int or do we need a long or do we potentially need a byte array because our we're dividing by a byte array, right? But since we're dividing our long int, I'm just, it's like a big int, right? Since we're dividing our big int by a regular int, we know that the modulus the maximum possible value of the modulus is going to be b minus one, right? Because we know whenever we divide something, if, it, if the mod is greater than b minus one, then we could have divided an additional one or we could have divided b into it at least one more time. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a kind of tricky problem to wrap your head around conceptually. So if you are still confused about this, feel free to comment in the video and I'm happy to explain this in more detail. But let's go ahead and actually start writing the code. So we, what we really want to do is we're just going to keep, we're going to take the mod and then we're going to shift by eight and add the next byte in. And then we're going to take the mod again and keep going. So we're going to say that we, we're going to have some int m and that's going to start out equal to zero because that makes sense. The mod is going to start as zero. And then we're just going to iterate through our byte array, right? So we're going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than a dot length and i plus plus. Or you could also do a, you could do like a four byte i in range a so i however you want to do it is fine and then so the first thing that we want to do is what we're doing here we so we start by shifting the we're going to start by shifting zero by eight and this the steps are slightly out of order because it's going to each time we go through it it's going to work this way but what we're going to do is we're going to start here where we have the remainder and then we shift so we're starting with a remainder of zero. We're basically starting, if you imagine that you added a zero here to the beginning. And so our, okay, so what you would have is you would first do the remainder of the first one. So you would have zero is the remainder of zero times zero. And then you're gonna shift that zero by to, you're going to multiply that by 10 and then bring down the one. But so we're doing it slightly out of order, but it's going to have the same result. So first we're going to take M and we're going to shift it by eight. And so I'm just doing this shift equals eight, which is the same as like a plus equals or anything else. It's just going to shift it by eight and then set M equal to that resultant value. And then what we have to do is add in the next value. So what we're going to do here is that's going to be the next value in our array A. So in this case, we start with the first value and then we're going to say that M plus equals AI. And a slight clarification point here, actually we're really going to have to do AI and this mask. And the reason for that is that we want to make sure that we're sort of doing some weird combinations of like integers and uh, bytes. And we want to make sure that we are not ending up with any weird uh, like 
sign bits or anything because the we want this unsigned byte basically and so the anding it by the ff is just going to take that those eight bits and treat them as an unsigned byte rather than potentially we could have issues if we didn't do that so that's just a point of clarification but if you were to if you were to leave this out in your problem it would be really not a big deal at all and then the final step that we have to do is our actual mod so we are going to do m mod equals b and then we return m so hopefully let's go through and hopefully you can see what i did here so we start with this we're going to start with our mod equals zero and then that's basically this step and then we shift by eight and bring down obviously i'm sort of mixing number systems here because I think it's easier for us to think about it in decimal, but this would obviously be happening in binary rather than in decimal. So you shift by eight, or in this case, you multiply by 10, and then you add in this next value. So then we take the, so then we take the mod of that, which is going to be this one here, and we sh so then we shift the one by we multiply one by 10 and add in the five and then we mod that by 12 and so we get three and so on and so forth so let's do an actual example in our proper number system so i'm gonna attempt to do <laughs> this example although it may get a little bit hairy so we're we have our two arrays like this or our array and our value b. So a equals that and b equals that. So let's say, so first m equals zero. And then while i is less, th while i is less than a dot length, we're gonna say m shift eight, which is still zero. And then plus equals a i or a zero. So now m is equal to this ox zero three and we're going to take m mod 10, right? So we're going to, so m equals m mod 10. And so that's going to be equal to the same value. So that's going to be, let's see, three mod 10. So we're going to end up with the same value, right? Because the same value, this value is less than our original number. And then we're going to loop again. We're going to come back and we're going to say, okay, this shifted by eight. So we end up with this value. And then we're going to add our next element in our byte array. So we end up with three ED like this. And then we're going to do M mod 10. And this is obviously 10 in decimal but we are, I'm not going to try and do this in my head, but we know that the, this represents 1005. And so our result is going to be O X uh, five, right? And then obviously this is an integer. So we have one, two, three, four bytes and zero five, right? Cause one, two, three, Four, oh, whoops. So that's going to be our result. And hopefully that makes sense. This is a kind of tricky problem. It's a little hard to explain without drawing it out on a whiteboard. But if you have questions, let me know in the comments below. And I can also link to some additional resources to help explain the problem a little better. Uh, in terms of runtime, just it's hopefully pretty apparent, but this is just going to take O of N time because we're running through our entire byte array once. And yeah, that's all there is to this problem. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And otherwise, I'll see you guys again next week.